Everybody got the ears on and everything, correct? Yep. We're hot. Hey folks, Jeff with Gear Reports, gear-report.com. I want to talk about this slick little trigger you see here. I say slick, it's actually pretty dirty. This is fresh from the range. We put some rounds on this trigger. And I'll tell you what, we were fairly impressed. This is from WMD Guns. And you see it's mounted in their Beast Forged Lower. It's got an interesting color to it, doesn't it? This is not your standard anodized black lower um, or buffer tube or safety selector or, or anything else. All of these metal parts uh, with the exception of the trigger pins and uh, the takedown pins are nickel boron coated so they call it NIBX, N-I-B-X. Nickel boron offers corrosion protection. It offers a little bit of kind of baked in lubrication it's actually harder than your typical anodized material as well. So a lot of benefits using this nickel boron coating. Uh, what WMD guns did here, let, let's take a look at this. If we release the trigger, you see this is a typical mil spec shape on the hammer. Uh, if we look down in here, you'll see this is basically a mil spec fire control group. But WMD guns did a couple things to it. Number one, they did a nickel boron coating on the whole package. So uh, with the exception of the springs, the springs are not coated. Step one, nickel boron coating. Step two, Dan, the head gunsmith there at WMD Guns, did a little bit of polishing on these. So the contact surfaces on the front of the trigger, the bottom of the hammer, both of those got a little bit of polish to them. So what we're told is the typical WMD Guns nickel boron fire control group is not polished when you buy it unless you buy it in a rifle. If you buy it in a rifle, this is exactly how you're going to get it. Already polished, already assembled. Dan also tweaked the spring slightly to reduce the trigger pull. It, it's around five pounds instead of the typical six and a half, seven pounds on a mil spec trigger spring. So those things were done to it. Understand that if you buy a WMD guns rifle that has this trigger, this is how you're going to get it. If you simply order their $48 nickel boron trigger kit, the fire control group kit, it's not going to be polished. But, you know, Dan tells me anyone with a Dremel tool or, you know, a little bit of elbow grease can polish theirs up and get pretty much the same result. You can go online and, and figure out what angle to bend the springs to to give you that five pound trigger pull and you know you'll get the same result as we have here so what did we think about this i mean it looks cool but how does it work i mean in essence this is a mil spec trigger that's just had a coating and a little polish put on it right so is that worth anything to us and i gotta tell you i, I was kind of surprised i expected this trigger to come in last or dead you know either dead last or maybe second to last we had a stock mil spec trigger in our trigger test and, you know, since this is based on a stock mil spec trigger, I figured that's pretty much where it would end up. But the, the little bit of work that was done, I, I'm told that the standard nickel boron fire control group that you get, if you just order this $48 part from, or parts kit rather, from WMD Guns, with the nickel boron coating, it does help the feel of the trigger a little bit, but then if you do some additional polishing on it, that's, that's going to make it a little bit better as well. So what do we think of this? Honestly, the, the way it's packaged here, this was a big hit with our testers. Pretty much everyone in the test group listed this. We did a rank ordered list of if you could have anything that we tested to, for your own to keep, what would you like? Everyone listed this. Most people listed it fairly high on their list. Uh, there were a couple items that folks said, you know what, if all I can have is a stock trigger, maybe I'll just keep what I have and uh, and, and I don't need the standard mil spec trigger. So it, it's kind of a big deal that this mil spec trigger with a little coating and polishing and spring tweaking moved up appreciably in the list. So we're pretty happy with this as an, as an AR-15 or AR-10 trigger. More importantly, we crowned the WMD Guns Nickel Boron Fire Control Group as the value king. What we mean by that is if you got 48 bucks to spend, this is your best value in a trigger upgrade. 
we had triggers that ranged from almost $250 for several of them to $225 to $250 in that range down to, I think, the Hyperfire EDT was about $90 as an MSRP. Boy, i got to tell you, we like that one too. That There's a great value in the Hyperfire EDT. So evaluate, evaluate what you're looking for. It's hard to go wrong with either one of these, but uh, unfortunately for Hyperfire, WMD won the value crown because it cost uh, around half and, and delivered more than half of the uh, performance as it was configured and set up for our tests. So really happy with the WMD guns, nickel boron, fire control group. We think it's a great value. We think if you like the general feel of a mil spec trigger, that's what you grew up on. You know, a lot of people like me, only experience I had with the AR platform was an M16 that I fired back in the Air Force. Guess what? That was a mil spec trigger group. So that's kind of what I grew up with. If that's the feel you like, this is about the best option I can think of. And on a cost basis, uh, very good value here. check to see what trigger pull weight it has. Five pounds. Four and a half pounds. Five pounds. Okay, so we just finished the long distance format shooting portion. We were shooting from the benches with the shooting rest. And uh, so now we're gonna go around and, and get feedback on all the all the triggers. <laughs> if you're working off a budget though. Well yeah, yeah budget is uh, WMD. Oh yeah. yeah. Again, we don't know how much factory polishing and tweaking they did on springs. Yeah. So apparently it's minimal that a user could be expected to do at home. For 48 bucks, yeah, you can't on the value category. Yeah. It by far kicks everything yeah. else's tail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Felt good. Hot. Alright, there. I hit that one too. As far as the rest of the lower goes, check this out. This, this is slick. This is. Uh, you know, it's a standard forged lower. The lower itself, it's got a really cool Beast logo on it. But aside from that, uh, there's not a lot special about it. We did take the flat trigger guard off and replace it with this strike fire that has a little bit more uh, room for a gloved finger or a big finger or whatever. But aside from that, pretty standard, but you throw that nickel boron coating on it, now you've got, it's easier to clean, it's more durable because of the harder surface finish and it looks kind of cool as well. WMD Guns was nice enough to include this TI-7 stock on the end, which is a really nice AR stock as well, with a building quick disconnect, uh, if you have a sling you'd like to hook up, uh, as well as a couple tubes here where you can store things, and a nice pad on the, the butt end. So, very nice. We like it a lot. Thanks WMD Guns for sending this and letting us run it through the ringer. This lower is actually going to stay with us here at Gear Report. Some of the things we review, uh, they don't stay here. We get so many products coming in to review. There's no need to keep everything here. Uh, we give away some of them. Uh, actually, we have a, a trigger contest uh, coming up, so keep your eye out for that. 
others, you know, some of the things are on loan, they go back to the manufacturer. This one, this is a long-term test for us, so we're going to keep this WMD guns lower around to do some additional testing, continual testing. Don't be surprised if you see this nice nickel boron gray in some of our future reviews. So we're really excited about this. It's a, it's a nice lower. It really is.